Now we learn today that another 858 immigrants from dangerous countries have slipped into our country and have been granted full citizenship despite pending deportation orders. It's true. Donald Trump's speaking moments ago, criticizing a major immigration mistake. The U.S. government mistakenly granting citizenship to 858 immigrants who had pending deportation orders. This according to a new report from the Department of Homeland Security Inspector General. Here now, Ambassador John Bolton, former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. and a Fox News contributor. When I heard this, I thought it was a mistake. I couldn't believe it was true. That You read the details, absolutely true. The Inspector General had... Now, we hear a lot about how carefully vetted the Middle Eastern refugees are, particularly those who come from Syria. In light of this report, how much can we respect or believe in that vetting process? Well, I think it has no credibility. You know, there's a saying in Washington, good enough for government work. Uh, and that's pretty much what this is. It's not just that they ma made a mistake and granted 850 people citizenship. These were people who should have been deported. So it's like they pressed the right. on button instead of pressing the off button. Now, the Minnesota attacker, the guy who was stabbing these people before he was shot, uh, he was from Somalia. There are a lot of people in Minnesota from Somalia who we discover go back out on the bat battlefield. Could that be because the vetting process with the Somalians is no good? Well, I think it's partially that, but I think we know from uh, our experience with ISIS that the terrorists have gotten very sophisticated at uh, trying to convert people, to persuade them to engage in terrorism at a distance over the Internet, it's something we've not defended against adequately. Mm. Uh, and it gives the lie to the idea that there's this international terrorism on the one hand and domestic terrorism on the other. Well, I think it's a distinction without th a difference. There's also distinctions being used about whether these people are lone wolves or whether they're working with a group. Uh, Rahami in New York is now being described as a lone wolf, uh, which is seen as not so bad because it's not a conspiracy. Here's what Andy McCarthy had to say about this whole lone wolf thing today. He said there are no lone wolves because wolves are a part of a huge pack of fundamentalist Islamic anti-Western movement that has millions of adherents some percentage of which will always be willing to take up arms and kill for the cause. What do you think of that? Well, I think that's right. Uh, the terrorist threat doesn't conform to a corporate or government organization chart. It's much different from that. Uh, and I think the whole notion that there, there are lone wolves who sort of like spontaneous combustion, you know, one day they're normal people, the next day they're terrorists, that's just unrealistic. They're communicating over the Internet. They're talking to members of their community. Sometimes they're being radicalized by uh, mullahs. Uh, this is something that's much more complex. Yeah. And I think the notion of lone wolf is designed to minimize the terrorist threat. I think the American people are tired of hearing that. we got 10 seconds. Is Hillary Clinton going to change her attitude towards terrorism and immigration? because of this? No, absolutely not. She's going to continue the Obama administration's policies if she's elected. If you want change, it's not going to come from Hillary Clinton. Ambassador John Bolton, thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank Appreciate you. it.